AP Calculus ABBC Exam Review Differential Calculus Fundamentals Question 6 Comparing Features of Functions In this question, we'll be doing a comparison of the y-intercepts of three different functions. f is a function defined on all real numbers, okay? And for those of you who want a concrete definition of um, real numbers, and as well as some examples, real numbers are the type of numbers we normally use, such as 1, 15.8, negative 0.3, Three fourths etc. Real numbers can be positive or negative, large or small, whole numbers, or even decimal numbers. These are all categories of real numbers. Real numbers are called real numbers because they're not imaginary. Some examples of imaginary numbers are Numbers like pi, actually not pi, um, something like i, this kind of looks like an i, which is defined as, pretend that's an i that kind of looks like a dotted j, the square root. of negative 1. Okay, so the formula for f is given below where f of x equals negative x minus 1 times x plus 3. She is a function defined on all integers and integers are whole numbers that um, don't contain fractions or decimals, such as 0, 1, 2, 3, as well as negative numbers like negative 2, negative 3, negative 7, etc. Integers between 3 and 3 inclusive. And note, an inclusive... Range of numbers includes the first as well as the last number and all numbers thereafter in between them. Okay? Another way to express three, negative 3 and 3 inclusive is negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3. So this is a common way to expre express an inclusive range. So the values are given in the table below. So the values of g after you input your x values, so g as a function of x, are given below. Okay. Now, h is a function defined on all real numbers, just like f. But there's one more stipulation. All real numbers greater than 3, and this is negative 3, and this is not inclusive. Again, real numbers are numbers like 1, negative 0 0.3 as well as 3 fourths. Okay, and they're not um, imaginary numbers such as i, which is basically defined as the square root 
of negative 1. So this is just another refresher. So the graph of the function h is given below. The question that I want to pose to you is which function has the greatest y-intercept? Is it f of x? Is it g of x? Or h of x? Because the y-intercept occurs where x is equivalent to 0, we're going to plug in x equals 0 in order to find the y-intercept for the function f of x. So if we let, allow x to be equivalent to 0, f of 0 equals negative 0 minus 1 times 0 plus 3 and we write this as equals negative negative 1 it's a double negative therefore it's going to be a positive times 3 or 1 times 3 equals 3 therefore the y-intercept for f of 3 I mean f of 0 occurs at 3 okay so when x is 0, y equals 3, or this is the y-intercept. From the table, we can see that g of 0 is 4. And again, we're interested in g of 0 because the 0 point in the domain of x is where you'll yield the function value that occurs on the y-intercept. So. Let me just illustrate what I'm talking about. It's probably easier to understand. Here's x, you know, y, or you can say g of x. So when the input value is 0, which occurs right here, you're going to get your um, y-intercept of 4. Okay, so a visual inspection of the graph of H reveals that the um, y-intercept occurs at negative 3. So H of 0 is negative 3. Okay, because you have to remember that the y-intercept will be the value that's yielded out of the function when the input for x is 0. So h of 0 is negative 3, or that's where the y-intercept occurs. Now that we've computed the y-intercept for each function, a quick um, inspection of this table reveals that g of x has the greatest y-intercept in terms of magnitude so our answer is in fact g of x. Okay.